March 17th today, St. Paddy's Day. Everyone's a little Irish today, so it's fitting that there's a lot of green happening here. As you can hear, the birds are chirping. They have been for a couple days. It's supposed to go up to 18 degrees today, which is crazy, considering it's been freezing right up until yesterday, on and off anyways. This should be the last of the really cold weather over with. And I think in four days is officially the start of spring, March 21st, I believe. So today I'm going to do the last of my late winter pruning. I left a lot of stuff until now. You know, all of these, these maples, this maple, I'm going to cut way back to those little buds down there. It's going to be a nice tree. There's some really cool movement in the bottom. Some of these pawpaws I'm going to prune. Like, like this one in particular is pretty interesting. I think I need to cut up that high, thick root that's growing. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of roots growing there, but you know, some interesting movement at the bottom thick trunk and then you know just a straight straight trunk minimal taper so I'm gonna cut it cut it back way back yeah the other maples that I didn't prune you know earlier in the winter I'll give those a prune that birch back here do some pruning my rows of Sharon's and the dogwoods Pretty much all my deciduous trees that need some pruning I'm gonna do today. And everything should start opening up real soon. It's interesting, the buds on these spruce, or this spruce, have closed up again. They were kind of, it looked like, you know, almost like a really small pine cone, like the little brown kind of coverings on there had curled outwards and just a couple days ago they kind of shot back in everything got all compact again you know it looked kind of fluffy before so yeah I'm sure those are gonna start moving soon buds look fairly plump on everything some of these you know pine buds almost look like they're starting to extend already so that's pretty cool get the pruning done today and then whole bunch of repotting coming up there's a bunch of trees I want to repot and do some really you know intensive root work a lot of young trees I have here they need to develop some good roots this year before I can really start getting them growing you know probably a couple more years at least of just root work before I really get going trying to you know figure out trunk and branch structure structure and everything like that anyways I'm gonna get started it's just so good to see everything in the sunlight again I can't put this feeling into words really I've never been more excited watch things grow before. This is my first year in bonsai that I feel, you know, really confident and that I've got some nice healthy trees, even though they're just all small and in training. Well, most of them. This one's still in training, but it's quite large. Everything's in training, which I find the most exciting part of bonsai, at least in this stage of my journey, after about three years doing this almost three years all right well this is actually more than I thought I had uh, to prune this is everything that I need to do some some cutting on you know it's late very late winter it's only four days till the official start of spring but it's 
really warming up so this is you know my last chance to do all this pruning before the sap starts flowing and they bleed too much I want to you know redirect the growth of all these ones this year so I'll do you know directional pruning pinching off or pruning off certain buds and you know, selecting which leaders I want etc I'll be doing a bunch of repotting soon on a lot of these trees but not yet I just want to get the pruning out of the way now and then once I see the buds starting to open I'll do the pruning sorry the repotting so that's everything I need to cut and I still have a bunch of things over here these pawpaws I'm gonna leave alone just let them grow same with these two those maples I cut earlier all my you know conifers I'm not gonna do any cutting on until you know it's time to pinch new growth and candles and whatnot those maples I pruned earlier same with these ones these ones yeah I'll probably end up pruning them too I'm gonna be repotting everything in here lots of pruning and repotting to do here actually this big maple I think I've decided to do something a little more radical with it than I originally planned um, you know I think I, I did originally want to just grow this as kind of an informal upright tree but you know, I've got enough of those and there's some good movement in the bottom of it. So I think, you know, and then like there's good taper to here and then it's pretty much just the same thickness, real slow. So I don't know, maybe I'll cut it back or maybe I'll just cut it to here. So at least something can keep growing and maybe force some back budding because there's not a lot of strong buds anywhere back there. I don't want to just do a hard trunk chop and kill this thing. It is actually one of the first trees I collected that's still alive. So I've had this one for almost three years, I guess. And it hasn't really done much because, you know, I didn't treat it very well when I first got it, but at least it's still alive and I can do something now. So I think maybe I'll do that heavy, heavy chop now. You know, I don't want any extraneous growth that I don't need. I have some of my indoor plants out on this warm day. It was like plus 18, so I figured they might as well get some nice indirect sun. I just brought them out in the afternoon once this little you know, bench area got shaded. And, you know, this one I'm definitely going to repot. It's a little mountain ash. Um, I don't want to prune anything on here because, yeah, it's pretty small. Kind of got some interesting growth patterns already. I can prune it back in the future. Okay, well, that's enough. I'll just get my camera set up and start pruning. Here it goes. I didn't mention before, but... These are all deciduous trees. I've got them grouped on their, grouped by their, you know, type. These are all ashes. These are two mountain ash. This is a white ash. These are my four pawpaws that I'm gonna prune. Um, this is my only birch. This is my only alder, a gray alder. My only oak. And, you know, this, I'm pruning this balsam poplar to not prune this uh, balsam fir, but I will be repotting them both when the time comes. Um, you know, this balsam, um, balsam poplar was just a volunteer plant. It just spread it out of this soil. I have no idea where it came from. 
I think it was just a coincidence that it came out in a pot with a balsam fir because you know this is totally new soil from where I collected this thing and I don't think any balsam poplars grow that far north anyways so that was kind of strange so this is my only dogwood a uh, gray dogwood these are three I think the only three uh, rows of Sharon's rows of Sharon's that I have in little pots. Um, I might be re repotting those. I'm definitely repotting this. I don't know what this is exactly, but it's been growing in here and I'll grow it as its own little tree. Anyways, these are all my maples, different types of maples, a Japanese maple here, um, some Norways, um, maybe a red and a silver one. Okay, that's enough talking. On to the chopping. Okay. Got my two different pruning tools. Usually I you know, bur burn them or use fire to sterilize them, but I've got a lot of things to today so I'm just gonna use a uh, rubbing alcohol and some paper towel to save time because I want to make sure I sterilize my tools in between every cut you know in between every tree just in case so I'll go ahead and clean them first There might be a little bit of noise in the neighborhood at times. It's St. Patrick's Day today. There's been a lot of people with the radio on. I really wanted to get out and get started on this stuff today, so I don't really have any other choice. I'm not gonna wait until you know, the music stops. Okay, that's those sterilized, um, I guess I'll just, you know, take a tree, and, okay, I decided this is the way I'm gonna film, try and keep my shadow out of the way as much as possible, I can bring it in close and show the structure of the tree before and after I prune. So this is my rows of Sharon and this is, I forget what, you know, I, I had a plant app that said something, but I forget what it is. I don't think it's an elm because, you know, it has opposite leaf structure. So. Forgetting I have a turntable now, I can just do that. Hopefully, it stays in focus. Um, so, I think these are growing in the same pot. I'll just, I'm gonna chop this one way back to here because there's a bunch of tight internodes and then a long one. Um, yeah, so I'll just use the same same tool for both of these. This one comes out to here. There's a little bud there and then a long internode and then something that'll come out this way so I don't really want that. Cut it there and then hope this one grows out this way in the future. And then this one kind of comes you know slopes outwards a little bit and then just shoots straight upwards there's a bud here looks like and then one there but I think this one is a good one to select it should grow it this way next and now the middle one I think yeah there's one two and then three 
back here. They're all pretty close together. I like all of those, so I think I'm gonna cut it back to this one and hope that they all they all branch out. Okay, there's the first Rose of Sharon and whatever this is. I like that. You can see there's lots of roots, lots of roots on the surface of the soil and tons that have grown at the bottom. So this one's definitely getting repotted. Probably just put everything, most things back into the pot they were in. You know, I don't really want to up pot anything, or most things anyways. I just want to get their roots sorted out, make sure they're all growing in their own pot. Okay, I'll move that one to the side. Maybe I'll just put the finished ones in the back there. This one is actually a little bit dry. I'll water it as soon as I'm finished here. These rows of Sharon's I just collected from the yard when I first moved into this house. I actually collected them in like October of 2020. So, you know, it wasn't really the right time of year. A few of them died, but they all grew pretty strongly actually. So this is the original, you know, uh, <laughs> the original seedling that I had collected. It all died back to one bud here, and that's just grown kind of straight up. And, you know, this part of the trunk is pretty straight also. Um, so, you know, if I have it like that, then somewhere, I think cutting it to this bud will work here for this tree. in between each cut. So I think yeah it's coming up this way. It'll branch out a little bit this way. I think I want to keep it coming out this way. So that's a good spot to cut it rather than it coming back this way. And Maybe I'll just leave that dead wood on it for now, see what happens. I kind of like it as a reminder of, you know, what it was before, before I had it. Sorry about the motorcycle noise. Yeah. That's a background. Neighborhood ambiance today. So, So this is also a Rose of Sharon, but it does look a little bit different. I think it keeps going out of focus, doesn't it, when I just have a single tree on there. So you know, it's also a Rose of Sharon, but the bark looks a little bit different. It's a little smoother than the other ones, it comes all the way up, forks at the top. I don't, I don't want all that length. You know, I don't need it. I like the thick trunk at the bottom. I think there's gonna be some good roots in there. Tiny, oops, tiny bit of movement down there. And then, you know, some gradual, gradual movement there. And then it comes up here, I think I'm gonna chop it back and make this one the leader. That kind of gives it some decent taper. Yeah, it's focusing on these now, isn't it? Okay, I'll just put everything back where it came from. Rather than over there.
guess I need to angle it downwards a little more so it focuses. Anyways, can't really get the focus figured out here, but I'll just keep my hand up to keep it focused when I'm doing anything. So I decided to cut it back to here. I'll let that grow up as the leader. There's also another bud here and one there. Those are, you know, pretty close together. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll just chop it right back to that one. Maybe those other ones can branch off too. So, yeah. I think you can, the buds on these rows of Sharon trees look pretty strange, but they kind of extend outwards soon and then, you know, leaf out after that. Okay, I'll put that back there. So that's the Rose of Sharon's done. Next I'll do this dogwood, you know, which are up to there. ones these ones I've shown this dogwood on the channel before this was an early tree that I collected close to three years ago um, it was you know long and straight or not straight but you know it had a bunch of branching but it was tall and pretty much no taper um so it it, it died back because i didn't take care of it so it died back all the way to there um, but then these two suckers shot out of the ground saved the day um so i cut the original tree back to a stump and there's a lot of a lot of root growth in here. You can see a lot of roots on the surface. Um, so I'm just gonna cut these back really short. This one I would cut here, but I think I'd rather have these two buds growing out this way rather than have to cut one off that's growing back in towards the other trunk which I'm going to, I'm going to allow, there's a little bit of nice slight movement there and then a bud up here. So I'm going to cut it to there. And there, just cut right through that bud. You can still see part of it back there. I'll just take it off. Battery's low, that's nice. Okay, that's enough for the dogwood. You can see how long those were. Next, I'll cut this poplar. You can see all the buds way low down. I'm gonna cut it real short, I think. Yeah, all the way back to this one. Quite a bit of room for die back just in case. Make sure I don't slice the other one. Yeah, so that also was a pretty long one. That was one of the ones that I cut back in the fall and you know said I would 
cut back further in the spring, late winter, and that's what I'm doing now. So those will get repotted soon. Next, I'll work on this little oak. I don't know what type of oak it is exactly, but it's pretty cool. It has nice little leaves. Um, the leaves kind of stayed on all winter for some reason. So I'll cut them off first. I don't know if they helped protect the buds over the winter, but you know, I just decided to leave them there. So there's this tiny little thing down here which isn't very strong, but if it grows up as another little trunk that would be cool, so I'll leave it for now. Um, this one back here, you know, it's, it's crazy, but there's two buds down here and then this whole thing is just one giant internode. And then a bunch of buds at the tip, so I'm going to cut way back to here. Room for dieback. Let some of these buds grow out. And this one, you know, again has a really long internode here, but there's a nice bud here that's growing up this way. I like that one. That could be the new leader, maybe. Room for dieback. And then this one. Well, wow, there's actually bugs out today. It's awesome. This one, yeah, I don't want this one growing back that way. But there's a bud right here. So... There we go. That's... It's gonna be a cool little tree in the future. I really like this one, actually. The small leaves on it are just perfect for a little oak bonsai so yeah I like the the multi-trunk aspect of this one you know it's funny but this was growing out here as a single trunk and then squirrel dug it up and chewed it off at some point and then it somehow managed to survive and just split off into two and then split again and yeah I think it actually got eaten again by squirrels after the first time so yeah it's a cool little tree Next I'll do this gray alder. It's my only alder tree of any kind. So, you know, it's, it's pretty interesting. There's tons of buds in here. Just tons of buds that formed, like, this tree is wild. I don't want any of these ones that grow down like that, so I'm just gonna take them off with my fingernail like that. Okay. Now, there's still, you know, this is a huge lumpy spot from where the original the original trunk, I don't know, got chewed off or something before I had it. It was, you know, it was already growing like that when I got it. It just got a lot bigger. So that's kind of a cool feature. And I think, I don't know, maybe I should leave this branch alone so it grows real strong and helps, you know, completely heal that over faster. Maybe I could even scar that up a little bit to help it along this year and then cut it way back next year because, you know, I kind of like, I would kind of like for this to be the main, you know, because this comes off at such a strong, almost right angle, it would almost make sense to just have another right angle and have it grow straight up and then I could add some 
other movement rather than a right angle and then a gradual, you know, something like that. So I think I want to do something, you know, pretty drastic on this one. I'm just going to get rid of everything past that. There's a cluster of little buds here. I'll just leave those alone and cut everything else off. And then later on, you know, there's going to be a big bulge here, of course, but I can just carve that down at some point. Yeah, so I'm just gonna come in at an angle like that. And take this out. Is it on camera? Yep. Yeah, that was a pretty big cut. Interesting how, you know, the tree grew around that dead wood. So there was a bunch of growth on that. And I just cut off. And now I'm just left with this little stubby thing. But I'm gonna let, you know, I'm gonna leave the terminal bud alone and just let it grow strong. And hopefully this wound will heal up now and then this wound will heal up now. And you know, it's got this crazy movement, but at least there's almost like a symmetry with, you know, where the wounds are on kind of opposite sides. And then the movement kind of comes perpendicular to that. I don't know. That's... Yeah, that's where my mind goes there. I don't know how you feel about this tree, but you know, it's definitely going to be repotted and some major root work. These roots are getting really thick. I need to chop those back. You can see all these weird little nodes. Apparently that's normal for alders. They kind of store nitrogen or something. Okay, that's enough for that one. It's, oops, this video is kind of getting long, isn't it? I keep chatting away. Didn't really mean to provide such a commentary here. So this is my only birch. 